forwards at all. Toriel did, ran into the clearing. Murdoch is still... Sort of stopped up here. And then that's going to go ahead and end his turn. <laughs> Toriel. Wait, bro. what happened? Did anything happen? Something did happen. <laughs> that's okay. the end of his turn. I'd like to heal the fawn, the fawn lady. With my divine touch. Blessed touch, I think it is called. H how do you spell the uh, Sator Chen? S A T Y R. Yep. So I can heal her, right? Yeah, how many points are you healing her for? I mean, I don't know how many she has. Like 10? No, wait, like, f yeah, 10? I don't have a female Caesar in here, so we've got a male, but imagine it's a female. I, I found uh, that she has a boob, though, I'm gonna censor that. What? No, we're all we're all adults, right? Can I post mm. this? Mate, I f think we can physically s search for pictures ourselves. Yeah, she I'm she, just... she doesn't have boobs. Well, she does have boobs. You can't see them. She's got a leather strap across her chest. No, uh, she's got like picture. very basic clothing. The uh, picture I found. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I heal her for ten points. So you you kneel down for a sort of moment, place your hands upon her shoulders. As you do, your holy symbol emanates with this familiar glow, which sort of sinks into your body, flows down your arms into her. And you see the wound on her shoulder begin to close up, and some good blood flow begins to subside. It still stains upon her skin. The magic seems to have worked. Are you going to make a movement? Um... I don't really know anything that's happening, right? You don't. You can use a bonus action to look about if you like. I'd love to. Go ahead and roll for it. So investigation. No, just perception. Okay, perception. Yeah, that's fuck all. I don't see anything. Four doesn't see nothing, does it? Man, these are some big ass trees. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll just hold my hammer and wait. Zoro stands back up after healing Sator, pulls her war hammer off her back, also clutches it in two hands, just looking about the tree line. I'd also like to ask her her name. She's she's too shell shocked -shock to even respond at the moment. She's kind of confused, like you. This, Dragonborn gentleman just run out and began to heal her. She's clearly been getting attacked. It's, it's a lot to take in at the moment. Okay. It's going to be her turn. She's going to use half of her action to get up. I mean, half her movement to get up. Yeah, and she's going to run here. She's going to say, It's over there! And she points towards it here, but up in the tree line. Yeah, it's going to end her turn. Uh, Tiffany, you're up. Yeah, but That's she's her, her. Is she attacking us? Or? Wait, uh, she, she's not attacking you. Who is? You don't know. <laughs> you know that it doesn't have a dagger at the moment, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, where did she point, by the way? Sorry. She pointed down here, into the tree line, though. Like, up in the canopy. I'm going to use... 
Wait, uh, where the hell the, the dagger, the dagger came, came from? I'm then. reading what my spell does before I use it, because I don't want to kill everybody. The dagger's stuck right in the tree in front of you. Right, that, right around there. Okay. Right, it's an action, 30 feet. I mean, you probably had to see right. it. Right, okay, I'm gonna use... Tasha's hideous laughter. On who? Well, where the dagger came from. All it does is it makes it laugh. Whatever it is should hopefully laugh. A creature of your choice you can see within range. I can't see anything though, can I? You can't see him. Okay. Well, I guess I won't be doing that then. I'll just ask my hawk to scout out up ahead. See if uh, you can uh, see anything. So your hawk has to make its way back, but it's received the command. Okay. It's not currently with you, though. Well, I'll just tell you that because I don't know what to attack. I've got to see the enemy do attack it with all my spells. We all got to see the enemy to do anything. <laughs> yeah, but I can't like stop running around swinging my little knife around. I don't know um, what else to do. Uh, do you want to make a movement? I'll move closer Because you, you, you can move and hold your action. I'll move closer to Marder. Uh, and I'll I'm, hold... I'm, I'm stealth, by the way. What? What's wrong he, with me moving He's stealth at the moment, moment, but you can move up to him. I'll move closer yeah, to him yeah, and I'll hold the last attack I said. Tasha's hideous mm -hmm. last attack. Is here cool, or do you want to go, like, further back? You've got around 10 more feet of movement. You could move towards me, so I can cast uh, whatever my the thing on it that disadvantage roll. I and still don't have an icon for Chris, either. Let's use the monk icon. And I'll hold my action until then. Okay, Murdoch, you're up. All right. Um, I'm I'm gonna just um, who's this, by the way? That's a um, goth. I'm pretty sure he'll draw you a picture. <laughs> he actually uh, has one in storage. I will move. Uh, I'll I will use both of my movements. Like I'll try to dash as far away as over here uh, as I can. Uh, but stealthily, can I do that? You can indeed. The furthest you can get is over here, and then you'd have to stealth again, but there's nothing for you to stealth with. If you went here, you could stealth behind the tree. And then, yes, that's where I want to go. Okay, so. Roll that pizza around the corner. He doesn't quite see where the guy came from. He's going to take off in a mad sprint. He dashed by the tree. Uh, out of the light eyesight of any of you. And he just appears to be gone. And his turn. Um, Garth is going to use his action to move out here. To make a perception check. Uh, what's the name of the person that's supposed to be playing Garth, by the way? Chris. Chris. Oh, uh, uh, why isn't he here today? Because he's working. Oh, I see. And he rolls a natural 20, actually. Wow, nice. And what does he do? He looks up into the canopy. 
Oh. He draws one of his. Uh, you know, I don't know what weapons he has. I say he draws a. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah, he he draws a hand axe off of his belt. And reds it in his hand. Makes an attack roll. It hits. As you see, Garth, he pulls his arm back and launches his hammer, just <laughs> spins into a tree line. <laughs> you hear this. Uh, uh. Jesus. What's happened? Someone stabbed. And you see a few droplets of blood drip down from the canopy. No. Before the branch in that particular area where you threw the axe gives out. So it falls out of the tree onto his back. What? Suffering. Just a guy falls out of the tree? A guy just fell out of the tree, yeah. Hmm. After being hit by the axe, the axe is still in his side. Yeah, yeah, that I got. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Garth, you have a very sharp eye. Hit 19 points of damage. Dang. Not bad. That's with, that's with the full damage included. That's um... his turn. Back to talk around. This guy's going to use half of his action, half his movement, sorry, to stand up. And take the axe out of his chest or whatever. He's, he's not even going to do that. He's going to leave it in his side and... and he's going to make a dash over here. You still can't see me, right? And he pulls something out of his cloak and just holds it in his hand. That's going to end his turn. Europe. Can I run at him and strike him in one turn? You can. I'd love to do that. So you run up to him, what are you attacking him with? Nothing, because I fail. Well, normally it would have been a hammer, but... Did you roll? A one. Ooh. See what I mean? So this is why I want to go back to real dice, because I, I don't think I've gotten a thing over 14 the last two sessions. So dragging your hammer along the dirt, almost kicking up a trail of mud and rocks, you swing up towards him and it just catches through his cape as he sweeps backwards out of the way. You swipe up into the air. So, and your turn... It's now our little friend's turn. Uh, seeing this guy fall out of the trees and all of you guys trying to help her, she's going to move down so she's got sight. She's going to pull uh, some pan pipes out of her side satchel. Ah. And she can just play a little tune on them. <laughs> No, that's a little gentler, I think. Mine's better. You see, um, Toriel, uh, for a moment, the gentleman shakes in front of you, like, slowly sways, and his eyes kind of begin to close, before he shakes his head and the fling back open, looks with this intense... That's going to end her turn. <sighs> Tiffany, you're up. Um, I can see the creature now, can't I? Um, not quite. What do you mean by not quite? You've almost got line of sight in him, but you, you're looking past a satyr and Toriel and part of a tree trunk. So, if I did use my attack, it would hit them? Uh, are you st still trying to use um, Hideous Laughter? Yeah, I don't want to hit them. What's the range on that? 30 feet. 30 feet, this is not in 30 feet of you. Never mind. Uh, he's about... 20, 30, 40, 60, 60, 60. He's about 70 to 80 feet from you at the moment. Oh, well, I guess I can't, so... 
I mean, there's no point in us casting that, is there? Do I have to cast it? No, you don't have to. Can I just get rid of it? You can just not cast it and do something else. Um, I don't know what else to do. I'm going to... Try and cast Acid Splash on it. Actually, Splash has a range of 63, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, then, I'm pretty much screwed, aren't I? But you can still move and take an action. You can move and take an action. I'll move closer and take an action. So, if you go ahead and move... Get to about here. Okay, I'll roll two plus what plus my D my attack. Um, seven. Yeah, no, you don't, you, you don't roll for it. I roll against your DC. Ah, okay. Um, go ahead and roll one D six damage. Five. And what's your spell save, DC? Thirteen. Thirteen. It just makes it. Uh, <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> Can you make me a dexterity saving throw? <laughs> God fucking damn it. I knew it. It doesn't matter. I mean, like, this is just gonna have nope. to happen. Otherwise, I'll just have to stand there. You are a tank, pretty much, after all. You're gonna have so to I take, take six points of damage. Uh, what do you roll? No, she rolled a five, so five points of damage. Did you fail the saving throw? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, you take five points of damage. Yeah, I can live with that. Okay, go straight to a cloak, however, only takes three points of damage. Uh, Murdoch, you're up. I would like to uh, move uh, in line of sight. Sure thing. So you move across over here. Um, can I examine the creature? What does it look like? Uh, roll of perception. Okay, one sec. From what you can see at the moment, you see that it's a humanoid entity, but the robes appear to have some form of enchantment on it, making it hard to discern the particular features of. I got 15 though. 15. Um, yeah, so you do manage to make out that he seems to be human. He seems to be. Very determined. And, um, that's about it. Other than that, the cloak is... Just, you can't really see past it too much. You can't gauge too much information from it. Uh, okay. Um, chill touch. Only but a goldie. So this kind of translucent uh, ethereal skeletal hand appears around the creature. Can you go ahead and make a attack roll for me? Yes, one sec. A 
Oh, Christ. It's eight. And as the hand tries to close around its target, again, he ducks down super low to the floor and it just grabs at air, dashes yeah. to the side of it, the hand dissipates. God damn it. <laughs> okay, I'm out of actions, I guess. Yeah, let's go ahead and your turn. I uh, cursed under my breath, though, while uh, it misses. He's standing back up. Uh, he looks around. He's like, <sighs> "Well, the, wait, the, the, didn't he like move? Doesn't Toriel uh, get a?" No, Toriel moved up to him. Oh. But see that he's still like docking, and Toriel is standing over him. Ah, unless he held his action. He didn't. Then. He didn't try to move away from Toriel. That's how it works. Oh, okay. You move away from creature within five feet of you, you get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, it would have been nice, considering I won't be hitting this thing at all. Anyway, for his turn, he's going to say. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm just imagining it like that. He's ducking, and Toriel's like hammer down. <laughs> That's what I want to do <laughs> next turn. Well, no, because. <laughs> Every round is six seconds. What you saw was him run over there. Toriel run over towards the, around the same time and swing for him. Yeah. At that same time, you tried to cast Ghostly Hand, and he dodged out of both of those attacks simultaneously. Yeah, I get it. It just would have been a lot cooler if uh, Toriel held, held his action. <laughs> <coughs> uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, please go on. He's got to say, Bloody Travelers always making things complicated. Well... <laughs> and he's going to grasp his cloak around himself, and he begins to almost blur in your vision. My vision? Uh, uh, everyone's vision. vision. And he's ah. going to charge straight at you. Uh, Toriel, you do get an attack of opportunity as he moves away from you. So I have to roll? Roll an attack. At disadvantage. Why at a disadvantage? Because he dashed. Because of his cloak. Um, uh, the highest would be 16. I mean the lowest would be 16. 16 hits. That's nice. the thing. It's extremely hard for me to actually miss, but I managed to do it either way. So is this just an attack or can I use a spell with it? Uh, it's just an attack. Like, you didn't have time as he dashed out to do anything to your weapon. It was kind of like a last minute. <gasps> Got it. Then we do roll damage. Which would be five. So as he... Wait, I had my strength, it. right? Then it's ten yeah. damage. You had your strength and your weapon damage if you got it. Well, my weapon doesn't have any enchantment, so it's just a d8. So it's ten damage. And I would like to 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 uh, to say, you attacked us, and then hit him. Oh, like where so the hell are you going? It was like, yeah, you swing, and your hammer seems to phase through the after image of this blur in front of you. As you do, you swing your hammer to the side and smack him straight in the back, almost propelling him forwards at the same time. He lets out a little. <coughs> so you smack him in the back, but continues running intently towards Murdoch. Murdoch, he's going to draw a sword as he gets to you and make a slash attack. Try to dodge. He rolls a. Uh, a <laughs> 12? Uh, it hits, actually. Oh, shit. I should have cast shield on myself. You should have. What you should also know is that shield is a reaction and could have been cast as he swung. Oh, uh, mine isn't a reaction. It's a buff. Is it not a bonus act? Uh, but do you know what my reaction is? I do know what your reaction is, but <laughs> we all know what your reaction is. <laughs> he, deal he deals you eight points of slashing damage. Oh wow. 
Okay, uh, As it I slices the front of your robes uh, and a streak of blood across your chest. I'm like ah and I raise my finger at him <laughs> <laughs> and fire her hellish re uh, rebuke at high level. Level two. So uh, uh give me a second here. I'm not sure how many dice am I supposed to roll. That's three D ten. 3v10. And he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. So I've got so many tabs, I keep losing my freaking dice. Oh, what the hell? Did that dice actually change the other one? Uh, like, did you see that? It, like, it was a uh, 10, and then the other dice hit it, and like a 5. I and don't that? think that's how it works. Yeah, I get it, but still, it was stupid. He doesn't make the save, so as this blood streaks across your chest, your chest, you're filled with this almost demonic rage, and your eyes begin to glow. And as you do, you point your finger towards him, and this spark of flames gulfs his entire body. And that's how oh, as the flames begin to rend his flesh. It's gonna go ahead and end his turn. Um, That's Toriel, 17 damage, right? Yep. Wait, yep. my turn? Did I just hear uh, my turn? Yeah. Well, so we'll do the good old run up and hit strategy. I think uh, it, I believe yep. your turn is right after mine. No, you it's say his turn next, but it was his turn, and Murdoch used a reaction. That's why that happened. But um, yeah, Toriel. Yeah, I'm currently rolling. I don't know why the sight's so slow. Uh, 11. 11 does not hit, so as you run up behind him... Doesn't he, like, get an advantage because his, his uh, head is turning to me? Uh... Yeah, you do, actually. Oh, shit. Because you're flanking him. If only I don't roll poorly again, which I will, because this... Oh shit, I don't. That's a 26 hit. Stop flaming RNG, Jesus, man. He comes through when time's needed. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> anyway, so I would like to hit him with the normal thing, and then the... The magic. What's the magic called? The good old... Divine smite you really magic. Say that before you roll your dice. Yeah. Not, yeah do I? Yeah, as far you say as I you, know. You say you do it before you roll. But I'll let it happen this time. Okay. But usually you say what kind of attack you want to attack them with, and then you say if it hits. Otherwise, it's kind of like if it hits, then I'm going to do my maximum damage. So that's yeah, nine damage. If, if, if and if it like doesn't hit, you're supposed to use a spell slot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that was how much? Uh, nine plus ten, nineteen. Ah, nice. So as you charge forwards, your holy symbol resonates with your hammer, and they both begin to glow with the same golden energy. And there's a streak of light across as you swing your hammer down to his back once again. Something straight between the shoulder blades, leaving the imprint of your hammer. And you swear for a second, the glowing symbol of Bahamut. But the glow summons Bahamut? No, a glowing, like, you swear for a second that as you remove the hammer, there's a glowing mark of the hammer. Oh. But you also swear that you see Bahamut as well in the glow. And then it dissipates. Uh, this time he just kind of clenches down on his teeth. He doesn't let out a yell there is a little Ur. but he seems to take the brunt of the attack he sort of turns his head towards you hmm. uh Sator is gonna put her pan pipes away seeing it didn't work she's going to run towards garth does she attack or is she... no she just runs over there and begins to cower by the tree. Um, Tiffany, you're up. 
What what exactly did her son do, by the way? It was supposed to make him sleep, but it failed. Oh. Another country and then a spell. Uh, only if it's a bonus action. An action. An action. It was a counter. But is it an action or a bonus action? It was to run. A cantrip to run? Oh, it's so, that's. So, oh, yeah, that's right. it that's makes that's me that's run faster. You want to do expeditious retreat? Yeah, I want to run closer to the action. Is that an action or a bonus action? I'll have to look. Expeditious Retreat is a bonus action, lasting up to 10 minutes. It's a level 1 spell, so if you want to go ahead and mark off a level 1 spell slot, you can do it. Okay. Meaning you I can move to... double movement speed for 10, spe for 10 minutes. I want to move close, but not too, too close, so I'm not in melee range. Uh, you have visual from there. You can also have visual from there. Does it allow me to uh, um, use a spell after or not? Yeah, you still an action. Um, can I do a really precise attack so it doesn't hit my friends? Depends on the spell. Like ice knife? Ice what? Ice knife. Uh, did one catch that? It's where I threw the ice out of space. Uh, ice... What's, what's that called? Ice Dagger? I'm gonna need some help here, come on. It's called Ice Knife! Ice Knife, okay, thank you. Sorry, I couldn't hear you through Discord. Ice Knife? Ice Knife, 60 feet, instantaneous, one action. I just don't want to hit anybody if I use it, so I'm allowed to turn it to really precise and hits the person and no one else. Yes, you can. Can I? I'll do that then. Are you casting it at? At the bad person. No, what what level are you casting the spell at? Uh, let's say two. Okay, if you mark up the second level spell slot. Let's kill everyone. As this, the air begins to get cold around all of you. As you guys turn to see where the source is, it's definitely holding a hand up in the air. Shut it down! As crystals begin to form and then slam together, forming the shape of a dagger, which begins to spin it's rapidly. I thought! Right past Toriel's ear, almost grazing her. Almost. I have ears. I have ears. Right wow. into the back of this assassin. Sticks right of his shoulder blade. If you want to go ahead and roll, um, 3d6. Uh, I think they're kind of like you do, but they're not exactly ears, they're like holes in yeah, your head. Yeah, I, I think they're just kind of holes. 3d6. But they're still ears. 11. 11. 11 points of damage. Like you have inner ears. You have holes in your head. As his dagger hits him with his shoulder, he recoils, letting out as his arm goes limp and he drops his sword. Uh, he falls to one knee. Blood streaking down his arm. Um, flames just dissipating over his body, sh revealing a series of burnt flesh and bits of his robe are singed, missing like circles. He looks around to all of you, now flanking him. He goes, I could use a little help here. What's so like Elvis? As he says this. I could use a little help here. Uh, if the site would work with me, please. As he says this, a figure drops from a tree right in front of you, Tiffany. And another figure drops from over here. Uh, 
cool. Um, 